Let's fill this with hydrogen and see if we can turn it into a little candle. It's a really cool experiment. I've seen it done a couple times and I've always wanted to try it. So step one, we got to make some hydrogen. I'm going to use this flask and we'll pour a little bit of water into it. I like it to be pretty concentrated, so I'm going to only put a little water. And then I'm going to put some sodium hydroxide in there. Bye. Get our funnel. And since I want it to react really fast, I'm gonna make it obscenely concentrated. This is always fun to think about, is the sodium hydroxide crystals break apart. They're a little exothermic. So if we check out the temperature, as it dissolves, where are we at? We're at 26 right there. I'll give it a second. See what the water was at. I wonder if it'll measure that. 22. About a few degrees. Feels nice and warm. Now, don't do this one at home. Always use safety glasses. And for this one, I'm actually gonna be using some like rifle earmuffs too. I have two holes in my little container here. Try to find better coping mechanisms than, than smoking if you can. We got a hole at the top and hole towards the bottom. This is gonna go right in here in this bottom one. Now we're gonna get our little bit of Reynolds wrap here. We want excess, so I'm gonna get a decent sized piece. Aluminum, when it reacts with sodium hydroxide, um, produces hydrogen gas. So that's where we're gonna get our hydrogen gas. You can do it a variety of ways to get hydrogen. You could use zinc and an acid. I always find lye pretty easy to get, so I like using that in aluminum. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this piece of aluminum right here in the top. And then I got a, a lid and I'm gonna put that on really quickly. I'm not sure how quickly it'll start to react, but sometimes it's pretty quick. Check that out. See those bubbles? That is aluminum reacting with the sodium hydroxide making hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas has a uh, atomic mass of two, because there's two of them. Each one has a mass of one. So that means it's pretty light. Air has an average mass of about 30. The nitrogen in the air, its mass is 28, and the oxygen in the air's mass is 32. So hydrogen is way less than that. Since it's two, um, its density is gonna be quite a bit lower than air at the same temperature. So I can feel coming out of the top here and hear it, a little bit of hydrogen coming out. That's what we want. We want to totally fill this thing up with hydrogen. Let's see how hot this is. Ooh, hot, I tell you that. Wow, that, 88. And again, this is not one you'd want to do at home. This is dangerous. <laughs> this is dangerous. Hurts your ears. Hurt. So many things can get hurt. This is probably, I mean, you could blow off your fingers doing this. So you want to be careful there. But this also, if that spilled on you, that super hot sodium hydroxide, that would just ruin your day. Turn your little fingers into soap. This is when my heart starts beating a little faster when we, when we go to light this on fire. What could go wrong, right? Just a... Uh, Container filled with hydrogen. Now this part, I find we got to transition pretty quickly. Here we go. I got a match on a big long meter stick. I'm gonna get way away. I got my earmuffs on. Here we go. My previous experience with hydrogen suggests it'll do something like this. <laughs> We got it. You see that? That is so cool. That is full of super flammable um, 
seemingly explosive hydrogen, and it's just burning like a little candle at the top. Let me try to show you close. Wow, really cool. Notice the flame is orange. Hydrogen's not gonna burn orange. What do you think's making it orange? I'll give you a hint. We put in sodium hydroxide. There's water fumes. So that's the sodium that is in the vapor that's burning there. Okay, let's just watch it for a second. Try to show you. What do you think's gonna happen when it goes out? My nerves are getting quite scared. <laughs> we got everything. Did you hear the sound? Wow. And notice that the camera hardly flinched. I am impressed by that. That was a really, really cool one. Let's take a minute and try to figure out what's going on inside here. We got our few experiments giving us some random data. I've always heard this explained in terms of a stoichiometry type problem where hydrogen reacts with oxygen in order to make H2O. But it's not just a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratio. It's not a hydrogen reacting with the oxygen to make one water. Our ratio, in order to have the same atoms that we start with at the beginning being at the end, we have to have two hydrogens reacting with one oxygen in order to make two waters. There, let me rewrite that. Two hydrogens reacting with one oxygen to make two waters. Now, we have to hit this magic concentration inside of our little container here, and does it initially do that? And our evidence suggests that no, it does not, because we have that awesome little flame that's coming right out of the top, and the flame starts out just this nice, cool, huge flame that's burning, and we have the lid that's down here on the bottom, and we got this little hole, and the hydrogen here is very, very small. Its mass, the atomic mass of hydrogen is one, which means two hydrogens have an atomic mass of two. So all of these hydrogens inside, they're just hanging out right up here at the top. And the only place that they have the correct concentration and ratio in order to burn is right out that little uh, top hole that we have. Normal things when they burn, like paper or wood, or most stuff that you're gonna burn typically, um, they require 18%. I'm gonna do that. Whoop, that's not a very good eight. They require 18% oxygen in order to burn. Hydrogen's pretty unique. I've read that it can burn down to 5%. So in 5% oxygen, hydrogen will still burn, where most everything else needs about 18%. So this low density hydrogen is floating up, it's lighting on fire, the fire's really hot, which makes the water that's being produced rise in convection currents. So we have convection currents making it wanna rise and not go down. And we also have a lower than 5% uh, concentration of hydrogen inside of the container. So both of those things are gonna kind of lead to the hydrogen not wanting to react in here, at least initially from the top. Now what's coming in from the bottom is our oxygen. And the oxygen's coming in and swirling, I think. I would, I would assume it's kind of swirling as it enters. So we would think, I would think, that as soon as the oxygen level reaches right here, it would just pop and explode but I don't think that's what actually happens. I think, and here's why. If you look at the flame as it's burning, the flame starts out fairly large and then shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. That could be because the fire starts to move down into the container. I need um, someone with a clear container, go Steve Mould, to show what's going on. I'm just gonna hypothesize here. I think the flame is getting smaller because there's less hydrogen that's entering the flame. And the reason less hydrogen's entering the flame is it's not pure oxygen that's going in. There's actually, when we think about the composition of air, 
a lot of nitrogen that's going in too. So air is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. So as this goes in, it swirls and swirls and swirls, and it starts to decrease the concentration of hydrogen coming out that can react with the surrounding oxygen. So we end up with a net less hydrogen burning. And um, so that our little flame is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But eventually the concentration of oxygen inside here gets up to that magic 5% needed for hydrogen to burn. And once we get to that 5%, then we have enough oxygen and nitrogen is no longer so like hydrogen and oxygen want to smash into each other and make a water. But what nitrogen's doing is just getting in the way all the time. So, right? They're trying to smash into each other, but they can't because the nitrogen's there. But eventually when you get over that 5%, they can smash into each other. And then we have that flame can go all the way down um, and just blow out the bottom there. Now there's some other cool things we could talk about. I think that's pretty good. Tell me more, like maybe once the flame burns, what do you think is going on? Like what happens inside the container once it lights to pressure and the production of water and how that contributes in convection currents? All that's cool. I'll kind of stop right there. Really fun experiment. Let me see if I can do it without flinching. Our cans full of hydrogen gas. Science with me, Caleb Fleming.